Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I'm bringing you today's word for April 29th, 2021. I'm teaching a series entitled Progress on Purpose. Why? Because I know that if you want something in God, if you want to become the man, the woman that God called you to be, you have to pursue your, your purpose on purpose, right? And so you have to do everything that you do. You have to be intentional about your progress. Why? Because those of us that are haphazard, you could be a believer. You say you love God. You say you appreciate God. You know God has called you to do certain things. But if you are just going to sit back, be lackadaisical, haphazard about it, not intentional, and you say, well, if God wants me to do it, I guess he'll make it happen, then these are people that don't maximize their purpose and potential. If you want what God has already provided, you're going to have to go get it, right? So God releases everything by grace. For 2021, God has declared new levels. We can level up in every area, in every facet, in every aspect of our lives. But that's what heaven has announced. That's what heaven has declared. That means that the grace of God for you to level up your life is available in 2021, in this season. But if you want it, if you want progress, you're going to have to pursue that progress on purpose. If you want progress, you are going to have to be intentional. So that said, we've been teaching uh, about progress on purpose all year long. <laughs> I didn't know that it was going to take this long. So I started in January. The Lord was like, break this down, lay the foundation for the year. And here we are like in April and we're still laying the foundation for the year. But uh, hey, look, uh, at the end of the day, this is the Lord's teaching, right? This is the Lord's ministry. This is his platform. And so I'm thankful about it. Uh, so I've been teaching about progress on purpose. I told you that I would cover five areas spiritually that we would level up in 2021, spiritually, financially, physically, internally, externally of those five, we've covered four. And on the external piece, I told you it was all about relationships. So I told you that I would cover the three people or the three categories of people that you need in your life, discerning when to let some people go, the importance of choosing the right friends, and then surrounding yourself with people of like precious faith. And that's where we are right now. And so I trust that you've enjoyed the series thus far. I've been covering a lot. We, we've been looking at example after example after example. I've covered a lot about friends. This morning, the Lord, instead of just, I, we've been going to like one passage and I've been talking about it for one day or maybe several days. Today, I was led to just go to several scriptures. So we're going to we're going to deal with several scriptures on today, and I believe they're going to be a blessing to you. The title of today's message is the support of your friends. You need, look at me, you need the support of your friends for you to become the man, the woman that God called you to be. You need the support of your friends. Let's talk about it. Four things to share with you on this morning. As I get into these four things, I want you to open up your heart to receive, you know, rid yourself of all distractions, lock in. Four things. Number one, here we go. You ready? All right. Number one, we all need encouragement from time to time. It's true. We all need it. Like we all need encouragement. We, we need to be encouraged. I am an encourager. So I know this. God sends people to me for me to encourage them. But watch this. Even encouragers need encouragement from time to time. We all need encouragement from time to time. First Thessalonians 5 and 11 says, therefore, encourage one another. And build each other up just as, in fact, you are doing. Paul was commending them. He was like, listen, you guys should be there for one another. You should encourage one another. You should build each other up. Now, I, I see that that's what you're doing, but you should keep doing that. See, there will be times, look at me, look at me. There will be times where you just don't feel like it. Like you, you don't feel like doing what you're supposed to be doing. You don't feel like pressing through more opposition. You don't feel like getting up again. Like, you know, you've been knocked down so many times and you just don't feel like getting up again. And you've heard, hey, but if you're knocked down seven times, get up eight and all of that. But you just don't feel like it. I mean, there are going to be times where you don't feel like it. There are going to be times where you don't feel like you, where you don't feel like being you, where you don't feel like, you know, you're a man of God, you know, you're a woman of God, but there are times when you just don't feel like it. You don't feel, you don't feel like going to church. You don't feel like praying. You don't feel any of that. There will be times, listen, live long enough. There will be times where you don't feel like yourself, where you get tired or frustrated or even, or even disillusioned. Like, like, you know, that how many times have you heard one of your friends say, man, I don't know, man, 
there got to be more to life than this, you know? And so, so there, that we're humans. And, and so we all get to that point. And that's why you need to be surrounded with people of like precious faith. That's why you need friends of faith who are going to encourage you by the power of the Holy spirit. We need people in our tribe. We need people in our inner circle that know when we're down. We need people that know when there's something off when they hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, bro, what's, well, let me highlight you for a minute. People that know that there's something off. People that know that they know you good enough to know that there's something that's not right. Hey, what's going on? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. No, no, no. Come on now. Now, for real, for real. What's going on? And so people that can encourage you, they'll share with you like what's going on in their life and you're there to encourage them. And then you have people that will encourage you. We all need encouragement. We all need people that will build us up when we are down because we all get down. From time to time, listen, there are pastors that quit being pastors. There are pastors that are leaving churches. There are pastors, unfortunately, that commit suicide. I'm talking about people that are giving their life to Christ to preach the gospel, commit suicide. Why? Because they got down and somebody didn't notice it. You need people in your tribe. You need people in your inner circle that can notice it. Be like, oh, hey, hey girl, come here. What's going on? Like, you know, we need somebody that can notice when there's something wrong. And they can encourage us to keep going when we feel like quitting. We all need people like this from time to time. You need people that are close enough to you that know you, that know you for real, for real, that can minister to you in ways that other people just can't and that other people shouldn't because they don't even know you like that. And so, so you need people like that in your life. Say amen to that. All right. Number two, we need friends who know what to say and how to say it. Ephesians 4 and 29 says, let no corrupt communication proceed from out of your mouth, but only that which is good to the, to the use of edifying, edifying. I'm going to deal with that word edifying, that it may minister grace to one another, minister grace to one another. Paul teaches us that we can have people in our lives that speak words that edify. The word edify means improve, enhance, enlighten. You need people in your life that can speak words that improve you, that enhance you, that enlighten you. People that always know what to say and how to say it. People that actually, their words minister grace, that God is actually ministering grace to you through their words. They become a conduit through which God is ministering to you. Matter of fact, I'm one of those people. And so, so I know that even when I'm teaching today's where I'm ministering grace to the hearers. I mean, you got to minister grace to one another where well, you know that somebody is being led of the Holy Spirit. Why? Well, it's the Holy Spirit through them. And so they are ministering grace to you. They are providing the voice, but the Holy Spirit is providing the words. And so you know that they're saying stuff and you know it's God. So they're talking to you, but at the same time, you know, oh my God, that's God. And so you're hearing their voice but you know there's a voice behind the voice. You're hearing their words, but you know there are words behind the words. And so they are speaking to you, but you know it's God. And you know that God is ministering to you and they are ministering grace to you. What? With their words. Their words are building you up. Their words are edifying you. Their, their words are enhancing you. Their words are inspiring you. Their words are encouraging you. Why? Because it's the Lord through them. They are a conduit through which God is ministering grace to you. Say amen to that. All right. Number three. Sometimes, now, I'm, I'm talking about people that are going to minister to you, people that are going to build you up, people that are going to encourage you, people that are going to provide. Yeah, all of that is good. But then there's sometimes, number three, sometimes you, you just need friends that, that are going to be there with you. Like, I mean, just be there. That's it. Like, I mean, not, not like sometimes it's not about words. Sometimes it's just about presence, right? So I love it when God sends a friend uh, who knows what to say, how to say it, who always has the right words to say. I love it when we need those words and, and the words minister to us. But then there are times, listen, there are times when you don't need words. There are times where you just need presence. You know, there, there are times where you just need somebody to be there to go through with you what you're going through, right? And so there are times, especially like when somebody's in a hospital uh, or somebody's going through a difficult situation. I remember when Isabella and I had a, a miscarriage and uh, Isabella processed it and, uh, and I, 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 you know, as a man, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm good or whatever. And I hadn't really processed it yet. And I remember that I was in church at, at uh, Faith Outreach in, in uh, Hepzibah, Georgia, and I was at church and my friends were there and my friends surrounded me and they hugged me and it was like, man, I, it, it's okay. And they started praying for me and I broke down. Like, it's like I had not processed it yet. 
I had not processed it yet. And when I processed it, man, I, I cried like, you know, an ugly cry. Like, I mean, I cried like a baby. And I just processed all of that. Why? Because my friends were there with me and I wasn't by myself. And so when, when, when you look at what happened to Job, what happened to Job was terrible. But, but watch this. Let me just show you. And, and I know that people talk bad about Job's friends. Oh, my God. Job's friends this. Job's friends. You know what? But yeah, but when the chips were down, Job's friends were there for him. Like the, maybe they were not perfect. Maybe they didn't do everything right. But watch this. Job 2 verses 11 through 13. This is what the Bible says. Job's friends heard about all the bad things that happened to him. So Eliphaz came from Taman. He came. He didn't call. He came from Taman. Bildad came from Shua. And Zophar came from Nama. These jokers came. They traveled. They was like, Job needs help. Let's go see our friend. And they met together and they went to go see Job and they comforted Job to show him their sympathy. But his friends didn't even recognize him when they saw him. They was like, oh my God, what is wrong with Job? And so when they saw him, they began to cry. I'm talking about people that can connect with you on that level. When they saw him they and they knew that there was something wrong, they began to cry. They tore their clothes. They threw dirt over them, their heads to show how sad they were. And then they went with Job and they sat on the ground for seven days and seven nights. And they didn't even say a word because they saw that he was in so much pain. And they was like, man, our brother's in pain and we're going to be there for our brother. Right now, it's not about saying a bunch of stuff. Right now, it's not about, I don't know what to say say sometimes you 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 open your mouth you mess things up you don't even know what to say sometimes you don't have to say nothing sometimes just your presence just being present i'm talking about having friends that would just be there and be present paul said it this way in romans 12 and 15 you laugh with, with your friends when they're happy but you weep and you share tears with your friends when they are down and, and sometimes you just need friends that are going to be there and cry with you sometimes you just need friends that are going to be there and to provide a listening ear or shoulder to cry on or just but just their presence the fact that you're not going through this thing by yourself the fact that there's somebody there with you i'm talking about we all need that from time to time this is why we got to level up our relationships say amen to that if you live long enough you will experience situations i mean if you live long enough you said brother pina i've never been through that okay fine live long keep living you live long enough there's going to be moments in your life where you it's like you get punched in the gut by life and, and you literally you you it takes your breath away and you need somebody that to just be there for you you, you don't need a whole lot of words. You don't need a whole lot of nothing. You just need somebody, somebody that can knock on the door and say, I brought you some soup. Let, let me sit down with you. I mean, just somebody to be there for you. Their presence speaks volumes that greater than their words. Say amen to that. Number four. Uh, last one for today. We all need friends that we can confide in. By the way, I felt the presence of the Lord in that number three. I mean, like the power of God came on. Anyway, number four, we all need friends that we can confide in. It's, it's bad when you're going through something and God is speaking to you in your heart and you're, you're, you're debating things and you're going through things and you have a lot in your heart and you don't have anybody you could talk to about it. Oh my God. I've been there. I've actually been there. That That's not easy. It's, it's hard not have not having anyone to share it with makes a bad situation even worse. So I want us to look at something that Jesus said in John 15 and 15 In John 15 and 15. Jesus said, listen, this was towards the end of his ministry. He had been with these guys for three and a half years. He's talking to his disciples. He's talking to his team. He's about to leave. Like in John 14, he told them, yo, I'm about to go peace out. You know, uh, I, I'm about to go. They was like, where are you going? He's like, you, you about to see. So John 15 He's about to leave. He knows his ministry is almost over. And he says, man, you know what? Hey, team, come here for a minute. I need to tell y'all something. What's up? I no longer call you guys servants. I've been with you guys for three and a half years. You've been with me. You've been serving me all this time. But you know what? You're not my servants. You know why? Because a servant doesn't know what their master is doing. A servant doesn't. Uh, a servant is not allowed into the master's thoughts or a master's heart. And so I now, instead of calling you guys servants, I call you friends. I call you friends because I've told you everything the father has told me. He said, listen, now, I mean, we're at the point. He was saying that, that there came a point in his life, Jesus, where he had a peace about sharing with 
the disciples what God was sharing with him. Now, prior to that, early in the ministry, no, no, no. He didn't tell them what was going on. He would go off early in the morning and pray and then get his orders from headquarters and then come back and they would do ministry and they'd be like, Jesus, where are we going today? Jesus, what are we doing today? And so they knew that Jesus did this prayer thing and Jesus came back when in from, which is why in three and a half years, they never said, Jesus, teach us how to walk on water. Jesus, teach us how to multiply fish. No, they only said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. <laughs> if there's one thing we need to know is how to pray. Because you, when you go away and you get this stuff and you hear from God and you hear from the Father, we need to know how to do that. But Jesus said, okay, there was a long time where Jesus couldn't tell them what the Father was telling him. And he says, now I'm at the point where I'm about to leave now, but... I'm at the point where I can actually share with you what's on my heart. I can share with you what the father is sharing with me. And because of that, you guys are no longer servants. You guys are my friends. You guys are my friends. You're, you're friends that I can actually share anything with. You're friends that I, if I can share with you what God is sharing with me, then doggone it, you're my friend. I can get you. We are at the point in our relationship where I can share with you what's on my heart. And we all need friends like this. I know it's not easy to trust someone on this level. Like I'm talking about intimate stuff. I'm talking about a level of intimacy that's between you and God. And, and But when you have some, and not everybody qualifies for this. Like to be clear, I'm talking about a small group of friends, right? I'm I'm talking about a very small circle. I'm, I'm talking about a small group. But when you get to the point where you have those people in your life and you can share with them what God is sharing with you, you could kind of bounce it off of them like that, you know, and they, you know, that they're men and women of faith and you, you can trust them with it. Then I I'm, I'm, man, it does something for you. I mean, like, let me just explain it this way. At, at the end of the day, remember, we're on a long journey, you and I. We're on a, a long journey to become the men, the women that God called us to be. And this journey is fraught with ups and downs, highs and lows, goods and bads, you know, challenges, successes, failures, all of that is on this journey. And so God never said it was going to be easy. And, and it, it, there are going to be times where, where it's hard and, and, and we're struggling and, and, and we're, we're challenged and God is speaking to us in our heart and, and we're not sure is this God, is this not God and all of this, but we need somebody to talk to, somebody that we can trust that with, trust that information with. Once again, not everybody qualifies, but when you have people that you can have these kind of deep conversations with, right? Deep, not, there's not a lot of people. But when you have somebody where you can have a real conversation, deep conversation with, man, this is what God is saying to me. This is what God is saying to me. God is saying this to me, man, and I need to share with you and I need somebody to talk to. And, 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 and if I don't do this, like if I don't become this, if I die before this happens, I'm going to feel like I'm a failure because I didn't do what I know God called me to do. So, man, I need somebody to talk to about this. Like you get to the point where you can share that, where you could be like your most intimate moments between you and God. And you're like, man, this is what I listen. My, my life is not man. Money is not about money. It's not about houses, not about cars, not about investments. Honestly, that stuff. Uh, God is good to me. I got it. But it's not about that, man. It's about this thing. My life is about this one thing. And if I don't become that, if I if 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 I if I don't ever get to that point, I don't know, man. I'm gonna get to heaven. I don't know if I if if, if I got there. Like I'm gonna feel like I'm a failure if I don't do that because this is what God has called me to do. You can't share that with everybody, but if you have somebody with you around you that you can share that with. That can that can be like, you know what? I'm gonna set my faith in agreement with you, bro. Hey, you know what, man of God, woman of God, I'm there for you. I love you. You know, let's let's pray about that. And I'm talking about somebody that can you can be that intimate with, then Jesus is like, no, no, this person is not a servant. This person is a friend. If I can share with you what God is sharing with me, that's a true friend. And we need friends like that. Man, God was all over this message. I want you to lift up your voice now. Close this message out. I want you to lift up your voice and say this. Say, Father, I thank you for imparting wisdom to me. I have friends because I show myself friendly. I then discern which friends to put in what categories. I have some friends that are in my inner circle. They are there for me when I need an encouraging word a listening ear, or a shoulder to cry on. This is a small circle of friends, people I can share my heart with. I share with them, Father, what you are sharing with me. As a result, we are better together. 
We build each other up. We never tear each other down. So I level up my relationships in 2021. And I boldly declare that greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. (laughs) Amen. This is today's word. So please apply it and prosper. I'm laughing because yesterday I was preaching today. I wasn't, I was more like teaching, but the power of God was on both. Like, you know, just different style, different delivery, but still equally powerful. Um, listen, I love you. Uh, I pray that you have these people in your life. If not, ask God to provide them. You know, I mean, they're there. You need people. You can't do this by yourself. You need the support of other people. Greatness is too great of a task for one person. Connect with the right people. You will become the right person. Do me a favor. If this message has been a blessing to you, leave me some comments in the chat. I do go back and I read every comment and it blesses me. And then uh, number two, share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline and with your friends. I love you. God loves you more. This might be a message you need to listen to again. Have an amazing day. I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you.